Welcome to the lecture on tag aliasing, in which we're going to be discussing the different use cases of tag aliasing. And I'm going to be going over a concrete example of tag aliasing, how it is done, and how I will be applying it to a point IO rack, which will be talking to our PLC system. Without any further delay, let's get right into it. Before we get started with today's video, we just wanted to quickly point out all the great content we've been releasing on the Solus PLC YouTube channel. And this includes industrial automation, PLC programming, as well as HMI development. And if you enjoy this type of content, we would really appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell in order to receive the latest and greatest content we will be posting to the channel. All right, so we are online with the 1769 L24ER QB1B Compact Logics processor. And as you've probably seen me do in some of the previous videos, I have been using some of these tags which are residing on the PLC. So these tags are typically created whenever you create the program since this PLC has them on board. And I'm just going to show you that if I browse to this embedded discrete IO, you will notice on the bottom right corner that these tags are specified as a local one input output as well as communication. So here I'm going to scroll all the way up and I'm going to double click on the controller tags. And under local one input output as well as comms, I'm going to find different tags. Now, you probably already know, but the inputs essentially are going to be coming in as booleans. So whenever e either one of those bits is going to be pulled up to a high state, we are going to see a value. I'm just going to switch over to monitor tags. Whenever we see a high state, it's going to be indicated by a one. And whenever the output is switched to a high state, the PLC essentially outputs a high voltage, which is 24 volts in this case. That being said, here, the inputs and outputs are mapped exactly as those those tags are specified. I've added a point IO chassis into the controller, which is going to be right here. As you can see, it's currently not communicating because it's not plugged in. But here you're getting essentially the same tags, except they're named a little bit differently, but they are named point IO rec one inputs and then here you also have an input module and here you have an output module that being said it becomes a little bit tricky to figure out what the labels are and in the past what i would typically do is as you can see here i would distribute the tags and for example this one i data that zero is going to become this local push button but this local push button is not the name of the tag it's essentially this input local zero and then this is just a description. Now with the version of 21 and plus of RS logics, this is not a huge problem because the descriptions are saved on the PLC. But with version 20 and below, this does become a problem because once you lose the program for whatever reason, if somebody doesn't give you a physical program for this specific PLC, then you're going to lose all the description. So the preferred method of choice in that case is going to be create what's called alias tags. So let's go back into a new, essentially in a new routine. So what I'm going to do here is right click this main, I'm going to hit add a new routine. And I'm going to create this new routine, which is going to be 06. And this is going to be my inputs, but they're going to be external. So this is going to be external inputs. And the reason why they are external is because they're not residing on the PLC chassis, there's something that I'm pulling in over Ethernet. So I just want to make sure that there's a separation between those two. So this is going to be a ladder logic diagram, it's going to stay within the main program. And just like we did here, like I said, there's going to be tags that are going to be labeled. So let's look at once again at what they are. So point IO rack one. And then this is going to be an input, let's go back into the controller point IO rack one. And then we're going to look at the input. And here's the data, you're going to get multiple points of inputs. Let's see here if we can open this up. And these are going to be essentially tag zero, one, two, three, so on and so forth. I just want to double check, I think there should only be eight. Yeah, that's correct. So it's an 1734 IB eight, rack one, one. So this is actually not the right tag. The right tag is going to be this one, one, let's see here. 
So it should be... Let's see, let's go into moderate tags and then we're going to try and browse through the tags once again. I'm just going to rearrange them in order. So I've got my array. One IO rack one one input. So here they are. So these are the eight booleans that are going to be coming into that tag. Now, what I can do is I'm just going to copy this in and I'm going to go back into the program, which is going to be this external inputs. And here, like I was saying before, you have the option to essentially use this and then you will notice that it's already alias. But what you can do here is instead of typing in this name, you can type in something like let's say this is a start or remote start pb1 so this is a remote push button which is going to be start and i'm going to right click this and create a new start push button and here instead of setting this tag type to base i'm going to select alias and alias i'm going to type in the tag which was brought in by the point io and I'm going to hit on create. Now, what you will notice is two things. So first of all, instead of just having the pure name, we now have what's called an alias underneath this name. And this alias represents the actual point, which is going to be referenced by the tag. So think of this as a comment, but it's the tag name. Therefore, you're essentially creating a structure which is always going to be retained on the PLC side because this name is going to be stored on the PLC even on version 20 and below. And at the same time, when you're programming your logic, you will notice the reference which is going with the stack or the alias which is going with the stack and it makes it a little bit more easier and more visual to see than just to read this point IO rack one input data one dot zero. So the same can be done for the output. So let's just look at the output module, which is going to be this point IO rack three output. And let's just control tab back into the controller scope tags and find the output. So the first output is going to be this. And like I said, let's just do a quick example. So if you were to write this, as you will notice that the output is just going to be plain, a plain tag, which is essentially so you will notice that it's also an alias. So the reason for that is that point IO creates alias tags automatically for you, but they're still not descriptive. It's not something that you can modify. It's not something that would be, um, you, you can't, for example, change the title of this tag. So this tag has been predefined by the module definition. So although it's an alias, it's not a very representative alias, and it's not something that you want to leave your program with. That being said, it still works. The logic is not going to, uh, to be any different. But here, let's just do another example. So remote stop push button. So this is going to be stop PV1. And instead of being this text, so I'm just going to go back into properties in order to copy this alias and increase it by one. I'm going to create a new stop push button. And here, once again, it needs to be selected as an alias tag and alias for instead of this zero bit, we're going into this one. We're going to hit create. And here for the output, just for sake of demonstration, we're also going to create and say this is a stop alarm stop beacon, for example, if this is some kind of a light, which is going to be remotely positioned to make sure that the system is stopped. So new stop beacon, I'm going to make that an alias. And I'm going to give this a one. And I'm going to hit create. So that pretty much sums it up for the alias. One thing that I that I do recommend that you watch out for is that once you start copying and pasting a lot of these and you create different aliases, it becomes a little bit difficult to troubleshoot. So for example, if let's say this push button seven is the same, let's go into properties once again, so I can copy the same tag, then this can also alias, let's see here, this can also alias the exact same tag. So as you can see this push button seven, as well as push button one, are going to reference or alias the exact same tag. Now this is going to be a little bit confusing when you cross reference because in your mind you're all, you're seeing that they're different and the tag names are essentially different, but when you cross reference, they're always referring to the same exact tag. So as you can see here, the reference is going to be different, but the base tag, which is going to be your alias tag, is going to be exactly the same. So hopefully that makes sense 
Typically, as I've said, if you're working with RS Logics 5000 or Studio 5000, essentially version 21 and over, there's not a whole lot of benefit in using alias tags because you can use the description. So when you right click this and you add a description, edit main operand description, this works just as well because essentially the description is stored on the PLC, but when you're working with RS Logics version 20 and below, and of course there are some exceptions depending on the PLC type, but when you're working with a version 20 and below, the comments or the descriptions are not saved on the PLC, so you risk losing those descriptions whenever you don't save the program, but you rather upload from the PLC. So hopefully that clarifies the topic of tag aliasing. Thank you guys so much for watching my content. If you have any questions on this topic, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video, if you've enjoyed it, that would mean absolutely the world to me. And if you have any suggestions for the channel, what kind of hardware software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that down there as well. See you next time. Take care. Bye.